Fighting for freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. The Patrick Riggins Show. Call in now at 865-243-8255. That's 243-TALK. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. All right. Back here on the Patrick Riggins Show. This show will definitely be one of the gold ones. <laughs> Yes, it's a keeper. It's a keeper. Although there's probably some people screaming at their radios and at Patrick right now. But, hey, that's a good thing. I'm making you think. Anyway, we're going to jump right back into this. We had, we're playing some quotes from Ann Coulter there and what she thinks of libertarians. And she's on Dennis Prager's show. This is another clip of what she had to say on there. I hate groupthink. And, and the libertarians have it every bit as much as the, as the college liberals I speak to. I give a lot of college speeches. And it was the same thing where, you know, you all have to cheer together and you all have to boo the same stuff. And, I mean, I guess when you're young and insecure, feeling like you're part of a group is important to you. Yeah, they were going to break. That Tori started looking around when he heard music. <laughs> so, Anne hates that group thing. But she does make sure she equates libertarians with liberals, just like Rush Limbaugh does, just like Dennis Prager does, just like she just did. But... She hates groupthink. She also gets that dig in right at the end of the clip, making the association that being libertarian and thinking like other libertarians, well, you just do that because you're young and immature and feeling part of a group is important to you. Can you hear the desperation from these conservative leaders? Can you hear how they are all saying almost the exact same thing? I've said this over and over on this show. Listen to what these people say with an ear towards freedom and liberty. If you do that, you will start hearing how they are all hypocrites. Both sides, Republicans, Democrats, liberals, conservatives, they all want to be in charge. They all want to be telling you how to live. They all have this arrogance, this contempt for true freedom this smugness that only they know the truth, that only they are the ones who can lead you to a life of happiness and fulfillment. If only you would listen to them, if only you would do what they say, if only you would live how they say you should live, only then will you be happy and content. Well, can I not just decide that for myself? No, no way. Only the truly enlightened can know the way for you to live, the path upon which you should walk. If you question it, if you try to make decisions on your own, then you're acting just childish and immature. Well, we are going to cut out of that real quick. I had a little bit more on it, but I want to get to this before the end of the show, mainly because we talked about it on one of my other shows. I wanted to update you quickly on a story we did. It was a couple of weeks ago. We told you about how Magpul, a company in Colorado that is one of the country's largest producers of, of gun magazines and other farm accessories. Now, there in Colorado, when I did the story, Colorado was threatening to pass restrictions on magazine sizes, and Magpul announced that they would be moving the company out of the state should that happen. Well, if you've read the news, you know what happened. Colorado passed the measures, and what happened? Now Magpul is moving. Here's a clip from my show real quick. Now, supporters of the proposals in Colorado say Magpul is bluffing and that a move would prove too costly. One of them, which is Bill Hoover, whose grandson, A.J., was among the 12 killed in the theater shooting there. He said, I don't think Magpul is about to pull out. It's going to cost them a bundle of money. Oh, yeah, here, here we go with Mr. Hoover, who is an expert because his grandson was killed in the theater shooting. Yeah, that makes you an expert. Hey, Mr. Hoover, did you read where the other states were offering to pay Magpul's moving expenses? Did did you read that? No, of course you didn't. Because you see your grandson's death as a way to push a political agenda. I'm sure your children are proud of you taking advantage of their tragedy in that way. Good move there, Mr. Hoover. You've demonstrated that you're a good state-controlled person, willing to walk in lockstep with whatever your government tells you to do. Way to use your critical thinking skills there. Now, as it turns out, Magpul wasn't bluffing. Here's the story from the Denver Post newspaper. 
ammunition magazine manufacturer Magpul Industries said it plans to begin leaving Colorado almost immediately. And other firms may follow suit in the wake of a new law that limits ammunition magazine capacities. Now, Magpul Chief Operating Officer Doug Smith said, Our moving efforts are underway. Within the next 30 days, we will manufacture our first magazine outside the state of Colorado. Now, the firm's departure could have a ripple effect on companies that supply parts and materials to Magpul. Lloyd Lawrence, who's an owner of Denver-based Lawrence Tool and Molding, Molding, said, We're basically going to follow Magpul and do our best to continue being a supplier of them, and it will probably be out of state. Manufacturers could continue to make large-capacity magazines if they stamp them with dates and serial numbers. They've said that that provision is impractical and potentially expensive. That's Mark Pasamanek from Wheat Ridge-based Carbon Arms. They're a manufacturer of parts and accessories for firearms. He said the his five-employee firm may consider moving out of state if the magazine capacity law is not overturned by future legislation or constitutional amendments. Now, personally, I'm glad this company... Magpul and, and all these others have stood by their threat and are moving out of Colorado. Now, not to screw over the people working there, but to make the point to lawmakers that people aren't just going to stand aside and let you run roughshod over them to remind you that your actions have consequences. And we are quickly along the same line. Colt is also considering doing the same thing in Connecticut. Their president and CEO said the pro-gun control climate that has taken hold in the wake of the Sandy Hook uh, school massacre and other farm attacks left him feeling unwelcome in the state his company called home for 175 years. And he wrote an op-ed in the Hartford Current this week in which he raised the prospect of leaving the state. He also said the company doesn't have, but he did say the company doesn't have any such definite plans but if the governor follows through on his promise to per, uh, to ban the purchase and sale of AR-15 rifles, and that's what the centerpiece of Colt's business is, he said leaving could become an option. Uh, he also said that Colt is constantly approached by other states to relocate. Several red state governors have made no secret of the fact they covet firearms makers, an industry that by some measures contributes $1.7 billion, that's with a B, dollars annually to Connecticut's economy. So they say what the problem is, is they say this is just common sense legislation, what they're passing up there, and they can't figure out why anybody would oppose it. But common sense would tell you that passing legislation is not a guarantee to change anyone's behavior. And common sense would also tell you restricting law-abiding persons' freedoms and liberties is exactly the wrong, wrong way to go about solving this problem which really isn't a problem from a gun perspective. Anyway, we're up on the last of the show here on the Patrick Riggins Show. We have packed as much as I could into this show. It's a very good show. Be sure and get all your conservative friends and Republican friends to go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Patrick Riggins Show, and have them listen to this. It'll be helpful for them. You can also go to facebook.com forward slash Patrick Riggins Show and be sure and hit the like button. And you can also email us at patrickriggenshow at gmail.com or drop us a card and letter to WLX on Kingston Pike. Woo! Join me next Sunday afternoon where once again we'll talk about freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. This is Patrick Riggins. We will see you next Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. Have a great week. Join us again next week for a solid dose of truth on the Patrick Riggins Show. Every Sunday from 2 to 3 p.m. Be there.